And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem, talking about Jesus, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. He entered into a certain village, and there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. Somebody say, which stood afar off. I wish you would let that just soak into your spirit for a moment, which stood afar off. They lifted up their voices, said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Mm. And when Jesus saw them, he said unto them, go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And someone say amen. amen. Lift your hearts to the Lord. We ask your Father to anoint us this morning. I pray that the word would come alive. It would be a rhema word. I ask you to let my mind be clear. I pray every word come out of my mouth be filled with life this morning. Holy Ghost, I surrender all that I am to you. I ask you, Lord, to speak to your people. Feed them in Jesus' name. We pray and every believer say amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to look at verse where our subject is becoming thankful. Somebody say be thankful. <laughs> amen. So I want to look at verse 15 again there, sister, if you don't mind. Because I want, I want you to see something. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. Now, he's not the only one healed. All of them were healed. But only one turned back and began to glorify God with a loud voice. Hey, let me ask you something. Oh, boy, you got to help me, Lord. Have you ever had any God ever do anything for you? That was so spectacular that you didn't care who saw you praise God. You didn't care who was quiet. It didn't matter what people thought. I, my testimony, I once was blind, but now I see. I once was lame, but now I walk. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Now, if that don't light a fire in you, well, so I can relate to this brother. He turned when he realized that he had been healed. And with a loud voice, he glorified God. Look at verse 16. And fell down on his face at his feet. And given Jesus thanks. And he was a Samaritan. That means that he was out of covenant. That really healing didn't belong to him. Have you ever received anything that really didn't belong to you? That the goodness of God came in spite of you? Yeah. I, I, I want to show you the power of this scripture. Is... Leprosy is or was an incurable disease. It was incurable. And it was highly contagious. That's the reason the Bible said that there were 10 men that, had, uh, that were lepers which stood afar off. They were separated socially. From people they loved, their wife, their, their husband, their children. who They had no dealing with society. And when they heard that Jesus was coming by, oh, glory to God. They hollered afar off. Because leprosy is so contagious. I started to bring some pictures or post some pictures for you on those who had leprosy. But honestly, it looked like a horror movie. And I just didn't feel like it was suitable for the, those kind of images. 
because leprosy would twist the bones and bend the fingers. It would cause the nose to collapse. People would lose fingers and ears and toes. It was a horrific disease. And the Bible said that when this brother who had leprosy, that when he saw he was healed, he turned back and gave glory to God with a loud voice. He fell down at the feet of Jesus and began to worship him. Now watch, watch, watch. You got to get this. This man was healed, but not made whole. He was, what, now what does that mean? It means that he could tell that he no longer had leprosy. But he was still missing his fingers, his nose, his ear, the disfigurement that leprosy had caused in this man's life. It was still there. And so with the disfigurement in his body, with things still not perfect, he still chose to give God praise and to honor him. Let me ask you a question on this Sunday morning. Do things have to be perfect for you to be thankful? Are you allowing the things that have not been made whole to keep you from praising God for the things he has done? Is it, could it be that you're so focused on things that you're missing and things that's not right that you can't even see what God has already done? If you're in this house this morning and you walked in and you're breathing and you're in your right mind, I got a word for you. I don't care how it looks out here. I don't care what's not right. God has done enough for every one of us. To give him praise on this Sunday morning. Do you know that if you are raised by a perfectionist, you know what a perfectionist is? They're miserable. Because everything has got to be right. And they're critical about everything. You can walk into a beautiful place and they'll see the one piece of paper on the ground and complain. you raised by a perfectionist and it's hard to be thankful when everything's not right. Maybe you had that influence in your life of being raised by a perfectionist where all they did was criticize everything. They criticized the church. They criticized the school. They criticized this. They criticized that. Now that spirit has got a hold of you and all you can see is the things that's not right, the things that's not perfect. But I want to challenge you on this Sunday morning to get the spirit that this man had here. He said, no, my fingers are still missing. My ear is still ate up. But can I tell you, I've been healed by the power of God and I'm going to... He was not, this man was not focused on what was missing. He was not focused on what he didn't have. He was focused on the good that had happened in his life. What are you focused on this morning? What are you focused on this morning? I guarantee you, you could give me a good list of everything that ain't right. But can you give me a list of everything that is right? Can you give me a list of some blessings this morning? Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Let's just sit down, get a cup of coffee, and you tell me everything that's wrong, everything that ain't right. That's good, but can you do the same thing with the things that are all right and the blessings that are in your life? Oh. You will never be a praiser if you don't learn how to be thankful, and you won't learn how to be thankful if you don't appreciate the things that God has already done in your life. You got to focus on the good. You got to get your mind on the blessing. You got to get your mind on the favor. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes we miss the miracle for looking at the things that are still wrong. I'm going to say that again. Sometimes we miss the miracle. 
by looking at the things that are still wrong. Great Good Science Center wrote an art article that said this. New research is beginning to explore how gratitude affects mental health. Mental health is a pandemic. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's nationwide, worldwide. So they said, you know, we're giving the medication, we're giving counseling. What can we do to speed up the process? And so they begin to do a study on how gratitude affects mental health. Recent evidence suggests that a promising approach is to complement psychology counseling with additional activities that are not too taxing for clients but yet yield high results. In our own research, we have zeroed in on one such activity, the practice of gratitude. Indeed, many studies over the past decade have found that people who are consciously count, consciously count their blessings tend to be happier and less depressed. This is not a preacher. This is not a Holy Ghost filled people. This is scientists that said, how can we get people out of depression and get them happier? They give them the medicine. They're given counseling, and it's not getting the rate of success that they want. And they said, you know what? If we can get people to be grateful and thankful, it'll take them out of the valley of darkness and depression and despair. So they took 300 college students struggling with mental health, and they broke them into three categories. We randomly, uh, randomly assigned our student per participants into three groups. Although all three groups received counseling services, the first group was also instructed to write one letter of gratitude to another person each week for three weeks. So one group had to write a letter of gratitude to a person for three weeks in a row. Whereas the second group was asked to write about their deepest thoughts and feelings about negative experiences. The third group did not do anything, did not do any activity. At the end of four weeks, those who wrote letters of gratitude had better mental health, even up to 12 weeks after their exercise. What they come to the conclusion is that gratitude unshackles us from toxic, toxic emotions. I want you to know this morning that you have a choice and you've got a weapon and you've got a power to get you out of that and get you in a good place and get your mind in a good place. And... Mm, you say, what is that, Pastor? Learn to count your blessings. Learn to focus on the good things. Quit magnifying the things that ain't right. Give God some time to finish what he started. Every one of us have got a reason that we can give God praise this morning. Come on, give him some praise. They found that gratitude has a lasting effects on the brain when you begin to Train your mind to count the blessings and to give God praise and to be thankful for everything that, you know, there was a time we used to be thankful over our food. We'd bless, we'd, we'd ask God to bless the food because we were thankful for it. Now we just wallow it down like a rock waller. Come on, can I get a witness? I'm just telling you if we'll stop and begin to be thankful for this day. Thankful for this house. Thankful for my wife, my husband, my children might be in my right mind. Thankful for my health. Thankful for my job. Thank, learn to be thankful. Learn to give God praise. It's going to change your mindset. It's going to change how you see things. It's going to change your spirit. It's going to change your heart. So here's my challenge to you today. I want you to start counting your blessings. I want you to start counting your blessings. I don't want to hear what's wrong. I want to know what's right. Start counting your blessings. And all you got to do is look around at other people. Because there's always somebody else that's got it a lot worse than you. I guarantee you, I know, I know it's bad, but it could have been worse. 
I know it ain't right, but it could have been worse. Come on, somebody. So here's my challenge to you. Start counting your blessings. Start praising God for all that is right. Start praising God for all that you do have. Start praising God for what you believe he is going to do. There is nothing worse that I think is being around a bunch of Christians who are negative and full of poison and all they speak is death and all they do is criticize things. That ain't the Holy Ghost. That ain't the Holy Ghost. I tell you what the Holy Ghost is. He's a spirit of faith. He sees good. Well, I know he is because he saw something good in you. <laughs> Someone say amen. amen. All right, so let me give you this, and I'm landing. How to live in gratitude each day. Hey, let me say this to you real quick. There was a man, and his name was Haman in the Old Testament. And the king made him ruler of, over all the nation. And so whenever he came through the streets, everybody had to bow down to him. There was one man by the name of Mordecai that refused to bow down to Haman. I want you to hear this. And Haman got so mad that he's, he, he, he set out on his heart he was going to get this man killed and everybody connected to him killed. And do you know what happened? In fact, he built this big old gall gallow that he was going to hang Mordecai on. You know what happened? Haman ended up dying on that same gallow that he was going to hang Mordecai on. And I want you to hear, Pastor, this morning, quit giving your enemies power over your thankfulness and over your joy. And quit focusing on the one person that's not celebrating you. You got a whole family. You got a whole church family. There's more for you than that. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. And if nobody stands with you, Paul said, no man stood with me, yet the Lord stood with me. Lift your eyes up. Come on, can I get a witness on that? Hey, you're going to have haters. Forget the haters. Forget the haters. And don't let haters make you a hater. Don't let the negative make you negative. You got the power of the Holy Ghost in you. Rise up. Don't let them pull you down. You stay high in the Lord. You stay in a place of victory. You stay in a place of thankfulness. You stay in a place of praise. Giving God praise. Hey, I'm not finished. Can you stand and give him a shout of praise? I'm feeling pretty good about right now. I'm, I'm not finished, but... I want you to think about one thing right now that you could give God praise for. I want you to think, seriously, in your heart, what's the one thing that I can thank God for right now? Will you do it? That one thing, one thing, one thing, one thing that you can thank God for it. Amen. I thank him for the blood. I thank him for whatever. What, yours is different than mine, but you ought to thank God right now for that one thing, that one blessing. Come on. And oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Someone say amen. Someone say amen. You may be seated. I'm landing right here. I got, I got, I'm, uh, I'm finished. Watch this. Watch this. Gratitude is a mindset. It's a mindset. Watch. Because you can choose what you're going to focus on. You can focus on what's missing, what they did, what they said, or you can focus on the blessing and the goodness. And I'm going to challenge you to change your mindset. I know we're living in Kenneth, Missouri. 
I know we're living in negativity. I know we're living among haters, but I'm telling you in the name of Jesus, you're going to rise up. You're not going to be negative. You're not going to be a hater. You're going to be full of thankfulness. You're going to be full of praise. You're going to be full of victory. He said, let your light shine in the darkness. Let your light shine in the darkness. Oh, glory to God. All right. All right. All right. So live in gratitude every day. Number one, choose gratitude every day. Gratitude depends on what you focus on. So train yourself every day to focus on the good. Stay away from negative people. Stay away from negative people. If them cell phones didn't cost so much, I'd have you break them right now. Stay off faith. Get, get, get you some real friend. Get you some real people. Who going to talk about faith? I, in fact, I remember Shay. I'll never forget Shay, Shay was going through something, and 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 she she said something to me. She told me she said this. She said, Pastor, I won't talk to everybody. She said because I want a believer's response. You remember that? I said, Ooh, that's good. Because I want a believer's response. Because a believer's response is God is able. But a believer's response is God going to go bring you through it. A believer's response is you're going to be all right. God's on your side. Yeah. Train, listen to me, train yourself to stop talking negative and thinking negative. Train yourself. Just stop it. Somebody say stop it. Number two, become a praiser of God. Learn, the Bible says, Psalms 100, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. The reason some of us don't get anything from church is we enter in grumbling. We enter in complaining. We enter in focus on the negative. He said, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. When we enter on the, when we get on this parking lot, negativity stops. Criticism stops. It's time to enter in and be reminded of the blessing of God and the goodness of God. Yeah. Two more, two more, and I'm finished. I'm finished. Um, I got a haircut. In fact, me and Zach got a haircut the same day. What was that, Thursday or Friday? Friday. And uh, Hiro is the guy who cuts our hair. And during COVID, um, his lung, he, 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 re, he got COVID. He was on a um, breathing apparatus. They pushed so much lung or, or air down in his lungs, his lungs would begin to split. They didn't think he was going to make it. They thought he's dying. I mean, everybody's praying. We're praying, and, and I, I don't know if you guys remember, we prophesied he was coming back to work. He's, I mean, we, we listen, and we felt authority on that. Well, praise God, he came back to work. So we're sitting there. Hiro and them just had a baby, had a new baby girl. So I'm sitting there, and I'm, I'm getting my hair cut. I said, Hiro, could you imagine if you would have died, you wouldn't be walking into all of this right now. You, 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 he said, he said, brother, he said, when I was laying there, he said, there was a lady who would come by and pray for you. He said, I asked her to come every day and I'm laying there. He couldn't talk, had the tubes in, but in his mind and in his heart, he's praying. He had a lady praying. Amen. And you know what God did? God brought him up out of that. God brought him up out of that. Now, I just want you to know, I want, I want you to hear pastor. Amen. That every one of us, every one of us have things similar to that, that if it had not been for God, we wouldn't be here. So why don't we get our praise back on? Why don't we get our thankfulness back on? Why don't we enter into his gates with thanks? given and into his courts we pray come on stand to your feet and give God a shout of praise come on give God a shout of praise <laughs> Whew. I want you to know you may not believe this it's truth that I battle depression. I, I battle fear. And you say, well, Pastor, why would you fear? You ought to come up here. 
You don't know if folks coming back. You don't know if the bills are going to pay. You, you, you listen. Hello. And the way God helps me to have the victory is what I'm teaching you this morning. When your mind begins to go there, stop it. Get in the word. Get in prayer. Get in praise. Be remind yourself of the goodness of God. He's never let you, he's never left you let, let you down. He's never forsaken you. Talk to yourself. Paul said, I, I, I think myself happy. Amen. I want you to know you can stop all that poison and that negativity. And when the devil shoots them fiery darts, you can put up the shield of faith and say, not today, devil. I know who my God is. I know who my God is. Hallelujah. Woo, glory to God. Someone say amen. Can you lift your hands and let's love God? Let's receive the word this morning. Come on, let's receive the word this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. 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 Now, if I could do it, I can't because I ain't the Lord. But if I could do it, I'd give you a new mind this morning, a new mind, where you could start thinking different, because your problem is, is the thinking. It ain't the life, because there's people who are praying for what you have. There's people begging God for what you have, and you can't see it because the mind. But I know one this morning who can renew your mind, lift your heart. Lift your spirit, get you out of the valley of despair, get, get you in a place of praise, get you in a place of good thinking, get you in a place with the right mindset, the right outlook. Come on, somebody. And his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. So I'm going to ask Brother Jeremy to come, and I want Zach to come, and I want Brother Green to come this morning. And we're going to open up the altars for these men to pray for you. Brother Jeremy is going to lead us in worship. Brother, you think you can lead us in worship at this moment? Brother Jeremy, are you good? All right. I got a thumbs up. That's what Elbel does. When she'll take a bite of something, she'll look and she'll go. And I've never found Elbel take a bite of something yet and not do this. So I, you know. So I got a thumbs up. Thank you, Regina. So, Brother Green, if you'll get on this side on that other altar, and I'm going to open this up. I know we have a lady who needs healing in her body, so this is for those who need healing in their body. But I want to pray first, and, and I want to open it first for those who need a real victory in your life, and you're in a line of thinking. You battle with, you battle with this thinking part. And rightfully so, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not, you know, coming against that. I know there's a lot of pressure, a lot of things. But I believe God wants to give some people a new mindset this morning. My, a new mindset. Quit, be, quit devouring yourself. Quit beating yourself up. Quit being so negative over yourself. Come on, somebody. You're self-mutilating yourself, you're self yourself. Come on. And if you're in here this morning and you say, Pastor, I, I need that. I just, I want, I, want the, I want God to anoint my mind with the oil of joy. I want God to anoint me with a fresh mind this morning. That I want you to come right now. And these elders and these men are going to anoint you with oil this morning and pray over you. So I want you to come. And, and I'm ready, Brother Jeremy, whenever you get ready. You can start strumming and, and I'm ready when you are. So if you need a healing in that area, I want you to come. If you believe God can do that for you, I know he will. So help me pray for a minute, church. I'm sure they're a little nervous on that. But amen. Don't be nervous. Come on. I believe God's got something good for you. But you've got to come out and get it now. Come on. you got to come get it. You got to come get it. It ain't just going to fall on you. Come on. You got to be like a blind Bartimaeus. You got to come get it. Oh, uh, we got folks coming now. We got folks coming. 
So if you need a healing in your body or just need prayer this morning, come. Let these men lay hands on you and anoint you and pray for you. So come. Come get what God has for you this morning. Hey, listen, this is going to be a great week. This is going to be a great month. God's going to help you. I believe we're going to enter into a, a brand new year with a new mindset, new heart, spirit of praise on us. Hallelujah. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, come on, let's worship the Lord. Any, is it just pastor or anybody? I feel the Holy Ghost here. I feel the glory of the Lord this morning. Ooh, the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. Guys, this is Caitlin. <laughs> and Caitlin is here visiting. And she has given her heart to the Lord. She's 16 years old and wanting to be water baptized in the name of Jesus. She's never been baptized before. And I count it a great honor to bury her with Christ and see her come up out of that water to walk in newness of life. Caitlin, upon your confession of your faith and the death, burial, in resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. I now baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. A hey church, and let's pray over. Father, through the authority of Jesus' name, let every yoke be broken, let a new heart and new mind come in this young lady. I pray for the anointing that destroys every yoke to just flow through her this morning. Oh, God, heal her body, heal her mind, heal her spirit. Oh, let her walk out of here, see things brighter, better, Lord. In Jesus' name, new creation, new heart, new mind. In Jesus' name. And every believer say amen. amen. Hold your nose, baby girl. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ.